Hi, it's Trish Brennan. I have um, a little something I'd like to drop into the discussion about communication. Um, some thoughts have been buzzing around in my mind this last week or so in relation to communication, mainly through things that are happening in my own life that are, I mean, I'm always expanding my understanding about communication because it's it's a subject that's so important to me so dear to my heart and obviously I'm a communication coach um what's come to me this morning is the ways that we close one another down unintentionally because it's so programmed into us to um expect certain things about how and who somebody else is in relation to us so we have this almost automatic expectation that somebody, say one of our children, they're going to be a certain way because that's how we've always known them. But so much we moulded our children to be little images of ourselves without really realising what we were doing. You know, we're not taught to, um, I think of, of growing a child almost like a plant, a baby plant, that you would put it in some rich, fertile soil. Then you would put water uh, in there. You would put the plant in sunlight and maybe put a kind of, um, I don't know what you call it now, a, a, a cover over the top while the heat and the water and the nutrients begin to take effect on the seed. And we put baby bio in there and different things to kind of nurture this plant this baby plant to start growing with its full potential and we're constantly adding to it and clipping maybe um, in certain places. I'm not particularly a huge, not huge, hugely knowledgeable gardener. I love to grow plants. So I'm not really having much of that going on in my life just now, but I've always loved plants and, and nature and growing of, of uh, the, the power of nature and what have you. I never realised that what we're actually doing is trimming off little growths that might be unique to that child to suit our own expectation of who that child should be. And we're, we're moulding them because it's what we know and it's what we've been taught to do. It's what we've been taught as a loving parent we would do. And you can transfer this to any relationship, um, how we, how our expectations might limit that person. And our communication with them is always going to be around those expectations. So if our child um, has a complaint, let's just for a minute use something that you, you may or may not know anything about. You know, I've always had an interest in, in psychic phenomena and you know, understanding all that stuff. I don't think of it as otherworldly. I think of it as, you know, parts of who we are that we, we've kind of trimmed off. We don't, um, you know, we don't tend to value those, those what we call psychic abilities. But I've always had a fascination with that kind of stuff. And when you read about people who are well-known psychics, like the John Edwards and, I don't know, other people that do the same kind of thing, what you tend to find running through their stories is that as children, unless they were very fortunate and had parents who also had these experiences, I think John Edward did, to some degree at least, have it in his family, there were other people that had those skills. What you tend to find is that parents sometimes shut those children down and, and have a responsive, don't talk about that again, and it's it's not okay, and the child ends up kind of suppressing it because they feel... It's not welcome, it's frowned upon in some way, that it's seen as a bit woo-woo, a bit mysterious, a bit bonkers maybe, a bit crazy. So we're trimming a child's natural ability, something that's a calling forth from them, from their own internal drive, to follow that particular skill or, well, calling. I can't think of a better way to describe it. So as, as parents, we tend to have that same attitude of, because we're conditioned to be that way, we're conditioned in this closing people in way. We live in a society that does exactly that. 
you know, we don't educate our children in school in that open way we we fill them like a bucket we fill them full of stuff that we think they ought to know but we're not doing a whole heck of a lot of nurturing and let me recommend for anybody who's not heard me recommend it before to watch the most uh, watched ted talk of all time as far as i know i don't think that's changed um, and that's the ken robinson talking about do schools kill creativity it's a real he's a very very funny speaker actually you'll laugh your socks off watch, watching it if you haven't already but it's such an important message this is how we have our relationships we close people in to uh, to be a certain way to conform with our own expectations and nobody really values um Doing, doing things differently it's kind of frowned upon in many ways and we just don't do that for one another we don't tend to automatically think of that person as a, a plant in a pot that, that we, we should put our, our efforts in uh, supporting and encouraging the unique and individual growth of that particular plant or that particular human being by acknowledging you know their genius their uniqueness being inspired by it admiring it you know not judging it not saying that's a good boy or that's a good girl but just being appreciative of it you know wow that's amazing i can't believe that i've missed that you know it, it's wonderful i feel inspired by you that kind of thing you know to, to find the language that enables that in our relationships with other people in a love relationship clearly the, those re I, I believe what happens in relationships where resentments come in and where things go wrong whether it's um, relationships that break down whether it's family connections that break down whether it's a parent to child relationship that breaks down to look at that how, how are we closing down what we expect back from that person and can we do it differently can we open up completely and be vulnerable in that not knowingness and just enable that person to come forward and to appreciate what they bring even if we don't understand it even if it makes us feel uncomfortable but just to accept it and be open and boy what amazing healing i think could take place in relationships if we could do that for one another and and even if we have to say look i don't understand it it, it, these uh, ch say children that are um, cross I can't remember what the, the right phrase is but you know born into a, a boy's body and they really feel like a girl or the other way around that it, how extreme their experience must be of being closed down when it's a gender uh, a really personal powerful identity question and we're trying to conform to to you know an old expectation, an old way of being, instead of going along for the ride and still loving that person and still being open to that person, whatever their journey is. So that's my challenge today, really. I want to, it's big stuff for me going on in my personal life around certain close relationships that, you know, I've not expressed what I want to, with with somebody. Um and I know why that is. I've recognised that pattern for a long time. It's just lately that I'm being called to come forth with, this is who I want you to see. And I really want you to see it. And to not resent that person for not having not seen it. For not having seen it. Uh, for having not seen it. <laughs> you get the picture. And to be compassionate about that and open about that and enable myself to ebb and flow in this new territory of open communication. Uh, so as I say, that's my challenge today. It's something I really wanted to share with you around communication that's going on. It's hot off the press in my own life today and, and over the last few weeks. And it's been a struggle, I have to say, without going into detail and, and uh, you know giving stuff away that's kind of personal. Uh, that's what's going on with me. It's that seeing, being authentic in my uh, I mean, I'm only just understanding this today that this is what's been going on. We've been, myself, myself and this other person, we've been caught up in this dynamic of me having to realise that we've both got this expectation going on of what, of, from the other, that they're not conforming in their behaviour to what we want, 
but I haven't truly expressed what I need because of fear of rejection and not being understood and knowing that in the past this relationship has been about not really being space for me to be who I am not being there to be you know in a space of openness and I've asked for it today I've actually said this is what I would like I would like you to see me I would like you to see me through my writing it's the best way I have of expressing myself I'm, I'm much better with writing than I am with the spoken word although that's improving so I'm going to leave that with you for now just to see what you, please give your comments and feedback below because it's really to me a hugely important subject not just for me but for all of us to ebb and flow as we awaken into a new way of relating to one another so I'll leave it with you have fun with it and uh, I look forward to seeing your comments bye for now have a great day